You know what, dude? You're not going to hear me say this too often, but you made some good points about, like, the process and, and wanting to win the right way. I know I did. And while everything you said is true, it's November and I don't care. Go Leafs! Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits! Let's Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How am I supposed to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. <laughs> With you wherever you are, welcome to LFO. We got one point and one catch. We got two points. This is for Willie. Yeah! Good boy. Leafs win! Two to one in overtime over the Tampa Bay Lightning and the parade is back on. Yes, it is, Drew. You're the editor. I got an editor now. Do something fancy. Put up a big graphic that says the parade is on. Is it? Is it on the? Yeah! What'd you put? You can't, you can't tell. What, what, what'd he put? All right, we're gonna have a question section of this LFR video at the very end, but I thought this one deserved to be at the front because it kind of helps me sum up the game. Couldn't catch the full game tonight, but it sounds like I missed a lot, huh? And no, you didn't until you aggressively did. So all right, uh, let's try to talk about it. First and foremost, I just want to congratulate the hockey world that we no longer have to talk about the Jack Eichel trade. Is it gonna happen? It's never gonna happen. It's gonna happen tomorrow. It's not gonna happen anymore. This team's in it. They're not in it anymore. And this team. And now it's done. We talk about the trade itself, and you can go watch my reaction to it on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. And now we're done, forever. Stop. Stop! Every game was just Eichel talk and political attack ads, and I can handle neither. But luckily now, we're only gonna get seven more months of just one of those things. A few notes before we start that we can't just slide under the rug. Christian Rubens was called up, and eight hours later he was sent down. Well, I hope you enjoyed your full day of NHL pay. It's Latvian sensation Christian Rubens put some respect and a pair of S's on his name. But it's, uh, three. Travis Dermott, despite not being 100%, we know he's not 100% because he was a game-time decision, still on the top pair with Morgan Riley, Justin Hall, up in the press box for a third consecutive game. Ow. Which means Timothy Liljegren is in the lineup for the third straight game. Less ow. He's been great, and I thought he was good in this one too. Now again, it's an 82 game season. The Tampa Bay Lightning are the reigning Stanley Cup champions, and you are not going to go 82 and oh, it's already impossible for the Leafs. However, if the Leafs are what this management group is betting on them being, they need to beat this team. Again, you're at home. That's got to be your temple. That has got to be the building that you own. And with Nikita Kucherov out of the lineup for the Tampa Bay Lightning, not to mention they lost their entire third line in the offseason, this is the Leafs' opportunity to pounce. Look at it this way. It ain't getting easier. There will be no late season games where the Leafs go, oh good, Kucherov's back. So you gotta win, you gotta win, you gotta win. But they're still the Lightning. And of course, they strike first. Because they're Lightning. With under seven minutes to go in the first period, still a relatively even game, Jake Muzzin had a bad time. Now what you and most people are gonna remember is him almost taking out Jack Campbell, which terrified me, and taking out the net, and kind of himself, Dude, I was so glad that Jack Campbell was okay that I was fine with the goal going in. But despite that being the funniest thing, perhaps, that happened to Jake Muzzin, this was the worst. In the offensive zone, this pass that goes very into the stick that is covering it is heading nowhere near Wayne Simmons, who I think was the intended target in front of the net. It's just a bad decision. Like, is he going for Richie? Does he think he's gonna get it through all of that to Richie? The puck goes the other way, Tampa is taking it up ice, and Patrick Maroon's reaction is hilarious because he sees Corey Perry rushing up and he does a little shoulder check and goes, oh, I'm the other guy. And I'm not going to hate on Patrick Maroon who has won three straight Stanley Cups and did score on this play, but he's not exactly the kind of fleet of foot player you expect to have a two on one. Case in point, Jake Muzzin, who's really not the fastest guy himself, makes that bad pass, goes around Tampa's net, makes a beeline for the Leafs zone, and almost catches Maroon. But going by Fast and the Furious rules, he didn't almost have him. Big Rig scores off a pass from Corey Perry. Of course! It's Corey Perry and the Lightning lead 1-0 after 1. Yeah, always good when the guy who scored looks tired and surprised. That's, that's sarcasm, it's, it's not good. Before intermission, however, Mitch Marner is sprung on a breakaway, and I'm gonna call it a breakaway because it was a breakaway! Victor Hedman gets the hook on Marner, at very least it's a hook, it could even be a penalty shot, but forget that. Mikhail Sergachev comes in, 
late and beans Marner in the head. Marner down for a moment, looked kind of dazed for a moment, but stayed in the game to the point where he was on the power play and John Arbuckle, uh, John Cooper was saying that he shouldn't be on the ice. He reminds, he, he should be the live action John Arbuckle. It's something about, it's the hair, I don't know what it is. Hedman gets the hooking penalty. Sergachev gets two minutes for a check to the head. Can I make a suggestion? There should never be two minutes for a check to the head! Five! Goodbye! It's just to get it out of the game and get the player out of the game, at least make it two and ten. Now, Sergachev did apologize to Marner before the game was done, and that's great and everything. That's a suspension. Absolutely. Apologizing is good. Good. You show remorse. That was bad. Remorse should be the bare minimum. That is exactly like demonstrated on tape in front of the NHL and NHLPA. That is exactly the type of hit we're trying to remove from the game. Blindside. Going up high. Directly to the head. Directly, directly to the- Stop. Stop. It's embarrassing. Well, actually, let me just bring up the Zapruder app on my phone, and as you can see, it glances off his back. Shut up! A hit to the head is a hit to the head is a hit to the head. I'm not saying how long the suspension should be, but it should absolutely be a suspension. That is textbook right there. Textbook. Speaking of textbook, Tampa must have read the book on the Leafs power play because the entire five on three sucked and they didn't score. All right. All right. You, you know what? I'm so frustrated by the Leafs five on three power play. I'm going to go off on it, but 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 first I, I want to hear what William Nylander has to say about it. This is a great tweet from Lance Hornby. Leafs are very upset with the Sergeyev hit on Marner. Crazy play, said Nylander. And when the Leafs couldn't cash in on the five on three, I don't know. We were just bad. Yeah, all right, Willie. Yeah, okay. Can't say much better than that. All right, fine, fine, fine. No rant. Sometimes you don't need to. Like some, it, yeah, they're just bad. That, that, that was bad. They were really bad. So now we head to the second, which again, look at the question at the beginning of this video. Nothing and everything happened. The Leafs outshot the Tampa Bay Lightning 13 to 8. Andre Vasilevsky had to make some stellar, unbelievable saves. Wayne Simmons got robbed at least twice in this game. And somehow in a period where they outshot the Lightning 13 to 8, the Leafs managed to get uh, no shots in like 12 minutes. Here's how you know someone outside of the Leafs fan base is talking about the Leafs they go oh man game in and game out you don't know which Leafs team to expect game in and game out you know how much I would kill for that dude period to period minute to minute I don't know one day the Leafs will figure out whether they're a good or a bad team and once they let us all know then we'll all know but until then you get periods like that and if you go 12 minutes without getting a shot you might get goalied by Andre Vasilevsky on account of he's Andre Vasilevsky. So now it's the third period and nothing's happening. I don't say that flippantly, nothing happened. The game was barely worth looking up from your phone for. But at one point I thought to myself, you know what? The Leafs are playing conservatively and so are the Lightning and the Leafs are going to have to take some risks in order to generate some offense and Tampa's probably going to capitalize on that and it's probably going to be scary. The Leafs opened up, Tampa Bay capitalized on that and it was scary! Braden Point on the breakaway stopped! 2-1 Jack Campbell flying this way stopped! Save after save after 10 Bell save from Jack Campbell putting up one of the most hard earned 24 save performances I've ever seen. It's like the Leafs minimized the amount of shots that Jack Campbell faced and every one of them was a legitimate scoring chance. And it was great. Jack Campbell was great. You can do anything with a goalie like that and the fans are chanting his name and everything like that. He can't score. I mean, he can try. It happens very rarely in video games and it happens more often there than it does in real life. And something tells me that Jack Campbell was never going to score with Andre Vasilevsky in the net. So something has got to give here. And it looked like the Leafs might be screwed. Michael Bunting getting the penalty in front of the net. He doesn't like it. Ross Colton, Stanley Cup hero, also goes to the box because he was holding Bunting's stick. And an exasperated Leafs Nation decided, oh, uh, we'll take it. A little bit of four on four action. Jack Campbell gets pulled. A little bit of five on four. He has to go back in the net for a little bit. Both penalties expire. And all of a sudden, it's six on five. With less than 50 seconds to go in the game and the extra attacker on the ice, Victor Hedman gets the puck behind the Tampa Bay net. No Leaf is particularly close to him and it looks like he's about to throw the puck down the ice. Instead, he makes a genuinely bizarre decision. Now even 
though it doesn't look like he's going to catch him, Austin Matthews is hot on Victor Hedman's tail. Mitch Marner is flying in. He's not going after Braden Point. He's going after the puck. He's going after Victor Hedman. Hedman's got a real simple pass to Braden Point here, and then Braden Point can chip the puck out if he wants. Instead, he does this weak little flip that John Tavares is able to jump and catch, and if he didn't, William Nylander was right there. From one of the best defensemen in the league, it was a genuinely bizarre play, and the Leafs take advantage. So Tavares catches it, puts it at a stick, and makes a quick pass to Austin Matthews. Matthews bobbles it a little bit, but sends it to the corner to Mitch Marner. All the while, John Tavares is heading to the net, and you want to see the disrespect? Guys, number 91! He's pretty good! How does he convince, like, what Jedi mind trick is this that he convinced everybody it doesn't exist? Not the sort of play you would ever expect from the Tampa Bay Lightning, let alone in the final minute of a game they're winning by one goal, but John Tavares and the Toronto Maple Leafs take advantage, he buries it, and guess what? We're heading into overtime. And I thought the final 30 seconds was very funny because the Leafs were like, no, no, we're heading into overtime. No, 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 no. We're not interested in playing hockey until overtime starts, sorry. We will play passy rotatey until then. We are getting this point, thank you very much. Then, in overtime, bit of a wonky line change, but the Leafs managed to take advantage. They pass the puck up the ice at the blue line. John Tavares gets it again. Is the captain going to ice this game after tying it? No, but Victor Hedman goes off for the slash on the hands of John Tavares. Once again, showing why John went one and Hedman went two. Heck, that was even the final score. It's written in the stars. So now, in overtime, we got a four on three power play. John Tavares stays out there for the power play. William Nylander joins him, and Mitch Marner, and Austin Matthews, and you might notice that none of them are a defenseman, but you also might remember that those four guys have scored a power play overtime winner for the Leafs in the past, and it was in Toronto. Not that that, I don't, I don't know why that matters. You know why it matters? Because it's more fun. The Leafs getting a little bit risky here. They are looking good. They're getting some shots. They're getting some opportunities, but those four forwards are staying out for what looks like the entire power play. And I mean, overtime is essentially just the line change Olympics, so if Tampa were to catch them, come in out of the box, they're in trouble. Even if they manage to get the line change, who's coming over the boards? They got their four best forwards out there. Luckily, we'll never know. You might remember last game where I talked about that Nylander pass to Matthews and mwah, and Austin thought it was so lovely that he decided to repay the favor. After retrieving a Mitch Marner rebound from the corner, he passes to Willie. Blam! Goodness gracious, there's more than two players on this team who can take a one-timer? Could've fooled me. William Nylander, get the crown and get the two points. Leafs win. And somehow, despite only facing 25 shots and making 24 saves, Jack Campbell was the Leafs MVP. He had a relatively, like, I don't know, kind of boring night until the final 10 minutes of the third period, and then he was all of a sudden George Vesna. Questions and notes. We start with a note. John Cooper said it was brutal the way the Lightning lost. The frustrating part is I don't feel like the Leafs beat us. I feel like we beat ourselves. Said it felt like they gave a point away tonight. Dude wins a couple cups and forgets how the rules work. What, is John Tavares on the Lightning now, or? When'd you get Willie? When'd, when'd you get, I know you guys got your cap shenanigans. When'd you fit him under the cap? How'd you do it? Also, you gave the point away. The Leafs took two. Can I just say, you know how difficult it is to talk smack to the Tampa Bay Lightning, especially as a Leafs fan? Does anybody else feel bad for Hedman? <laughs> no! Which is no. To quote Krish, oh. You guys follow Krish on TikTok? Oh. Victor, I don't give a. How do I apologize to everyone in my house for how loud I was when the Leafs scored in the third and OT? I've been there before. I, I totally get that. Um, I think what you do is you don't go Leafs! When do you think Sandine will be at the point on the power play to set up Nylander and Matthews for one-timers? Riley simply doesn't have the deception that Sandine does. And then I really appreciated the first response to that tweet. Based on Riley's extension, the fall of 2030. Okay, that's very clever. I don't want to turn this into a one versus the other thing. You know, Power Play 2 for most of the season so far has actually looked like the better one. Or at very least, they've gotten the better results. And that's Sandine. And that's working. And that's good. I don't think it needs to be one versus the other. I think it just needs to be an option. You know how, like... It's weird that, that, that tonight they went to Matthews Marner and Tavares Nylander again. That was cool. I like that. Why don't they ever flip was my question a few games ago. Why not? Why not? Sometimes you have Sandine on power play one and sometimes you have Riley there. 
I think that's perfectly fine. I think it should adapt based on the team you're playing, etc., etc. It's good to have two options. No, Steve, I'm too excited to think of any questions. Oh, that's fine, but I went to you this time. Ah, next time, whenever that is. So, whew, what a day. Um, made a video about the Jack Eichel trade. That's on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Made a Dangs video. That's on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. And then I got a haircut for any of you who have, yeah, I got a haircut for any of you who have seen those two. And then I made this. Did you like this? Was it good? Oh, and tomorrow we have a brand new Steve Dangle podcast where, uh, um, I don't know, what should we talk about? All right, all right, one last time. For now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends on Saturday on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. I'm Steve Dangle, and we'll be watching the Leafs take on the Boston Bruins. Sheldon Keefe. Take it on the Bruins as Leafs head coach for the first time, which seems impossible. And in the description down below, help me raise some money for Easter Seals. It's a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities. I only got a week left to fundraise. It would mean a lot to me.